A lesson today is entitled The Faith of the Wise Men. It's found in the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. This is Sunday School lesson for December the 31st, 2023, the last day of the year 2023. And the key verse for our lesson today is found in the second verse of the second chapter. And it reads as follows. Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star in the east and have come to pray, to pay him homage. Again, the faith of the wise men is our subject. So the aim of this lesson is to explain how the wise men point to the inclusion of the marginalized and grief for those who suffer innocently due to the world's brokenness and sin and identify with the wise men's decision to perform an act of civil or disobedience to that king. This is my YouTube channel. I ask you to please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. You'll get my lessons automatically. Please like my lessons and share my lessons and leave me comments. All of these things continue to encourage me to share this word of God with you. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we wind down another amazing year, Lord, we are grateful that you, for again, finally, you have assembled your people around your word to hear a word from you. Right now, Lord, we ask forgiveness of our sins, wash us and make us worthy vessels to be used by you. Surrender our will to you, Lord. Use us as your humble servants, Lord. Send us the true teacher, the Holy Spirit, to teach us your word. And Lord, make our hearts fixed and right, Lord, that we'll receive your word at this moment. We're thankful for what you have done for us throughout this year, 2023. And Lord, we pray that 2024 is a even more greater and amazing and phenomenal year than we've ever had in our whole life. Lord, we are thankful for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. And it's all started at the garden. Was Satan deceived man and they fell from grace. Adam will no longer walk with God face to face in the coolness of the day. The voice of God speaking directly to Adam. That's no more because of this sin. And man sin. And when they just when they disobeyed God, and at that moment they were separated from God and kicked out of the garden and having to till for their life. And blood is now the requirement for all sin and ultimately but but ultimately Satan will be judged in the end for this error. And ultimately, man will need a redeemer to restore man's relationship back to God. That is this whole Prince of Peace, this Messiah, who will come. This Messiah, the Messiah, Jesus, is the name above every name. He's a blessed redeemer. He is Manuel, God with us. He is a rescuer. He's a rescue. For sinners, he's a ransom from heaven. He is Yeshua Hamashiach. He is Jesus, the Messiah, the Lord of all. This one who would come. Next one. And that Genesis 3 and 15. That is where it all God was said to after man was to sin that. God said he will send a redeemer. A Messiah will be born of a woman. <clears throat> and in Genesis 3 and 15, he says he will put this, this, in it, this enmity, this open hostility between you, Satan, and this woman and your offspring, those, those would follow you and her offspring, which be Jesus. And he, this Jesus, will fatally bruise your head, Satan. And you, Satan, will only bruise this Messiah, this Jesus, this, this Emmanuel, you will only bruise his heel. Not, he will give you a more mortal wound and yours will just be a nick. Let's move on. <clears throat> and almighty God, 
because of the sin that was wrapped and because of Satan, what he what all the flesh was 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 constantly against God. And it grieved man that sixteen hundred and sixty fifty six years after he made man that ultimately had to send man to a watery grave. And it, the Lord was the Lord, Lord saw the witness to this depravity in man, which was so great on the earth that every imagination or intent of the thoughts of his heart were continually evil. Man was just cruel. And God, re and the Lord regretted that he had made mankind on the earth, and he was deeply grieved in his heart. And so he says, I will destroy, I will annihilate man who I have created from the surface of the earth, not only a man, but, but the animals and the crawling things and the birds and the air, because it deeply grieved me to see man sin, and I regret that I have made him Genesis 5 Genesis 6 and 5 through uh, 7 next Satan convinces the seed of Adam to continually to, to uh, oppose God throughout time and Satan tries to stop this Redeemer that's where our lesson about the Redeemer who was born uh, so uh, plus 1600 years there would, there would become a flood, and man's sins and thoughts were continually evil, such that God estimated of over 7 billion people went to a watery grave. As many people on the earth today went to a watery grave, grave today because of their sin, and the animals also, because of Satan's influence, God reset mankind with one righteous man after the flood, and that would be Noah. And sin will continually... Uh, be there and that ultimately God would, would cause an, uh, another action he would come down upon earth and and then he would uh, uh, after the Tower of Babel and he would scatter man and confuse the language that Tower of Babel incident but he would choose one choose one man out of the sinful flesh and that man would be Abraham and from this one Abraham the lineage would come to this promised Redeemer that's why we go through this whole exercise for understanding why we're even here. Let's move on. After this Noah, after that flood, he would come from the lineage of, of Shem, one of Noah's son, through the lineage of our fixed ad, through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Again, this is God's people, God's Messiah, a thread that I shared is woven throughout Genesis all the way to Revelation. Next slide. The prophecies about this Messiah were sent from Almighty God to all those prophets from throughout the time periods. The prophecy said that the Messiah would be born of a woman, Genesis 3 and 15. He'd be born of a virgin, Isaiah 7 and 14. He'd be born, he is the son of God, Psalms 2 and 7. He descended from uh, he descended from Abraham and from Isaac and from Jacob and he's from the tribe of Judah and he'd be the family of Jesse and the house of David all the scriptures are there to show you he'd be born in Bethlehem he was presented with gifts he's threatened by Herod Jeremiah 31 and 15 he is God and man he's a very he is verily God and verily man Isaiah 7 and 14 he was a prophet Deuteronomy 18 and 18 a priest He's a judge, he's a king. He was preceded by a messenger, that would be Malachi 3 and 1. That would be John the Baptist, would be that one who would go before him. He used to be born 873 years, 70 weeks and 62 weeks after uh, uh, 445 BC. That would call, rebuild, and restore Geno, uh, uh, Jerusalem. Daniel 9, 24 through 27. All of these things, the prophecies that would relate to him, no one could manipulate because these were things that no one that could not, that Jesus or the prophet or, or, or the, someone could could change because they are from very different eras and all pointed to us. That when that Messiah will come, we know that he is the one. Next one. He had the descendant of Adam, descendant of that Noah, obviously as all flesh, and, and he'll be, this, be from the lineage of Abraham. He'll be from the lineage of David as well, on both sides, on Mary's side and on Joseph's side, that he would be this Messiah, the 
Again, the genealogy of Jesus is the truth. Let's move on. This angel, Gabriel, will speak to Mary and Joseph separately to tell them about what's going to happen, <clears throat> how their lives will be changed forever, how the world will be changed forever. Luke 1 and 26 and 27. And now in the sixth month of Elizabeth present with present present uh, uh, pregnancy, which she would be the one that will bring that Redeemer John the Baptist to life. That is uh, Elizabeth is the, the cousin of, of Mary. Uh, the angel went to her and uh, was sent from God in the city of Galilee and to a virgin. Again, this is Luke 20, chapter 1, 26 and 27. And to a virgin patrol to a man whose name was Joseph, a descendant of the house of David, as I share with you, and the virgin's name was Mary, both coming from the lineage of David. And, uh, and we find it 28 through 30, and coming after her, the angel said, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you, but she was greatly perplexed when she said she kept carefully considering what kind of greeting was this and the angel said to her do not be afraid for you have you have found favor with all my god and throughout time women all wanted to know what they would be that one be know that the messiah be born of a woman born of a virgin so obviously this mary knew something about the scriptures as well as well everybody did that she would now fall in favor with Almighty God. Luke 31. Listen carefully, young woman. You will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus. That Messiah, that Emmanuel, the Savior, the righteousness for Almighty God, our bread of life. Next slide. This child is born now according to pro prophecy. Elizabeth John the Baptist will be that forerunner, Messiah born of Mary, born of a woman. Excellent. These wise men throughout time will seek him. I share with you that Daniel will point to the exact year when he was to be born. The prophecies all foretold about this one Messiah, and here we find in the prophecy, he says, but you, Bethlehem, or in the land of Judah, you are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Micah 5 and 2 and John 7 and, 40 and 42. And therefore the Lord will give you a son. And behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall, and shall be named Emmanuel, God. With us, Isaiah 7, 14. Let's move on. These magi, these wise men, they, uh, uh, they, they, uh, it's a group of men who have studied the stars because the Bible says that they came from the east. Many scholars believe that they're from ba they're Babylonian or Persian uh, astrologers. These wise men first come to Jerusalem because the star a special manifestation from God indicated a Jewish king's birth. And they would then come to Bethlehem following the star again to find this Jesus. And tradition says that there were three of them. But scripture never gives that number of how many they were. The idea is, is there because they had three gifts for this one Jesus, this Christ child, this Redeemer, the prophesied one. Let's move on. Again, the wise men coming from the east, people uh, knew in the Testament, the Testament days was the east was this whole Babylonian or, or Persian region. And these people were astrologers. Again, not following the true and living God, they're following the stars. Next slide. Give you some perspective, the map this. Amen. <clears throat> wise men were astrologers. They saw some, kind of, some sort of unusual star, possibly a conjunction of planets that indicated to them that a new king 
of the Jews was born and they traveled to Jerusalem, the, the Jewish capital where they were expected to see this child. And I say child here, he was not an infant like a lot of what we see in popular culture today. They most certainly arrived in a great caravan with many servants and their, their, their um, arrival caused quite a, a stir in Jerusalem, especially as they were asking about the birth of this prophesied king one who will sit on David's perpetual throne. Amen. It was King Herod the Great. And Herod was known in history as Herod the Great because of his loyalty to Rome and was given authority over Palestine. Again, a king given authority. He was, he was, I mean, uh, he was a puppet, a king. And the title of king 37 to 4 bc to win favor with both the roman and the jews he carried out lavish building projects including the sites of caesarea and samaria and, and a new temple uh in jerusalem and herod had 10 wives and he deserved the reputation of being cruel and unscrupulous as a despot because he hated he, because of hatred and ambition for power among his families and because Herod's consuming suspicion that someone was will usurp his throne he even executed one of his wives and three of his oldest sons and we had this uh, message before where where uh, David was kind to the the the, the son of Saul the, the grandson of Saul the the, the son of of, uh, of of his best friend and uh, and now you see why that the kings were, were were worried about their their position, and David's favor was a grand gesture where this was a norm where kings would want to make sure they hang on to their power. Let's move on. So it's submitted to you a timeline which I've shared with you so so many times that gives us a. Uh, uh, the uh, history of this chosen people. And, and, and again, the events that are transpired in the Old Testament leading up to this Messiah would ultimately be born, and we would go through a period of kings and prophets. And the prophets of God would go from the Judah, uh, would be uh, Isaiah and Hezekiah and, 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 and Josiah and Jeremiah and Daniel and Ezekiel. And, and, and again, that this people would ultimately go into an exile at the hands of Babylon for 70 years that we exile, but there will be a restoration period after those 70 years. And under the leadership of Ezra and Nehemiah, this people will, uh, Ezra will restore Jewish life and, 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 and Nehemiah would, would re, re come and rebuild the walls and they'll restart this uh, and create a covenant with God, God's people returning, and then those Persian kings would would would, would give a, a call to restore this temple in 445 B.C., setting in motion and setting a time clock that will begin what we find will occur today. And God is done with these folks, and for the next 400 years there'll be a period of silence where God will no longer speak to His people. That again, but the time clock is ticking waiting for a Messiah who is to come. The background, let's jump into our lesson, amen? So our subject, the faith of the wise men here in the gospel according to Matthew chapter two, verses one through 12, amen? So in Matthew chapter two, verses one through six, again, that faith of those wise men. And now Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Herod the great, I share with you before, and the Magi, the wise men. And I'll tell you the wise men, the sect is believed to begin back at the time of, of Daniel or these, these seekers, these wise men would, would all that would, would come on the scene. And these wise men from the east, they came to Jerusalem asking, where is he who has been born the king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. 
and have come to worship him. Verse 3. And when Herod, Herod the king heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. Again, uh, those wise men would probably come in with, with, with a, a, a large entourage of, of men and, 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 and they would ultimately have uh, probably the, the, the horses and, and donkeys that would be carrying other goods. Again, they would have a long journey to make their way to see this king. So he called together all of the chief priests and the scribes of the people and anxiously asked them where was the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, was born. There was five and they replied to him in Bethlehem of Judea for this is what has been written by the prophet Micah. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are not in any way least among the leaders of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people. That'll be the prophecy that the one my prophet Micah would give to this, these wise men, to all of humanity, that the, the, the king, the prophesied Messiah will come, has been born, and now they're going to pay homage to him. Let's continue on. So he was born the king of the Jews, the wise men, priests. They were priests and as well, I need you to understand they're all part of that lineage that come through Daniel, but these wise men were, 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 were priests and, and intentionally they came to Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, seeking to worship the one whom they thought was a child of born, born a king on the basis of their calculations of the stars, on the basis of the calculations of 483 years, knowing that the time is about that time. In verse 7, and then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men and he learned from them the time when the star appeared. Again, Herod is trying to get as much information that he can about this 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 child. Again, that he is a, as a as a king, and 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 he no doubt has already killed his his family members because he was was afraid that someone would come and supplant him as king, and 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 he couldn't have any of that. And then, uh, and then he told them to go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. Again, this is the faith of the wise men as our subject. And again, here we are in Matthew chapter two, verses one through 12, and that's verses seven and eight. I just giving you some perspective and giving you the color of this lesson that, the, that, that this Herod is now claiming he wants to come and, and, and worship this young king and we really don't think so. I share on your background liar, liar pants on fire that, it, that there's no way that this king is going to be worshiping this this another king that, that, that he's he's killed so many people to keep that position. That's not his intent by any means. Let's move on. prophecy of the birth I share with you from Michael. But you of Bethlehem, Ephraim, Ephraim, through you, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one who will be ruler in, e in Israel, whose brings forth are from old, from everlasting the prophecy will come. The wise men know the scribes and Pharisees know, and now the king knows that this Messiah, the one called back, I shared with you in Genesis 3 and 15, is now here on the scene. But do you really think that this insecure king, King Herod the Great, who just killed four of his seven members, that could have challenged him to his throne? wants to worship Jesus, come on, to worship the king of the Jews that all of Jerusalem is looking for. Should we really believe that 
Herod the Great now wants to worship the prophesied the one true the true king of the Jews not one who's put in position by the Romans now next slide. the faith of the wise men in verse 9 and after this interview the wise, went, the wise men went their way and the star that they had seen in the in the east guided them to Bethlehem and it went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was again there's a miraculous event that these wise men be, be experiencing they've traveled a long distance they've traveled no doubt probably months in order to get to where they are at this moment and now that they're they're, they're coming to a place where God will lead them to come and worship this prophesied Messiah, this child born, this God with us, this Messiah, this one that God would call before the beginning of time, Mary's baby, one born of the mare of the virgin. Let's continue on. Verse 10 of our text. And when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. The just king has just been born. This child has been born. The new king of the Jews, the prophesied one. Let's continue on. Amen. The faith of the wise men in verses 11, verse 11 of our text. And the Magi, Magi entered the house and they saw the child with Mary and, and, and bowed down to worship him. And I, I think I share with you that that, that, that this is a a, an, uh, a toddler. This is not what you may, and I'll mess up your your theology that maybe you think that it was some infant child that would that were born in a manger, that they that, that these wise men have traveled a long distance to come into this moment, that they would now see this toddler, this, this child who was with Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. And when they opened their treasure chest, they gave him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Let me, uh, the, I, I shared with you last time and I, I sang this horribly. I know this is a lesson I taught two years ago. I'll try to do a better job of it. We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we traverse afar. Fields and fountains moor and mountains follow the young their star. That's where we get the whole three kings and and we don't know if there are kings. We don't know we don't know if it was three. Is that because there were three gifts? And that's what we we get the whole concept of there being three of these men. It could have been more, it could have been less, but these were the wise men who've come to worship this child. Let's talk about the gold of frankincense and myrrh to magnify that and move on in our text. Amen. And the three gifts had a spiritual meaning. The gold was a symbol of kingship on the earth. And frankincense and, 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 and incense was a symbol of deity that Jesus was this this Christ child again that he was Emmanuel, God with us, and myrrh was an embalming oil that symboled the death. That he would come and he would have a sacrificial death, but he would do it to, in order to, 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 to bring peace to humanity. And sometimes these three are, 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 are defined as gold symbolizing virtue, or frankincense symbolizing prayer, or myrrh symbolizing suffering. But they're both, all three of these are symbolic uh, um, elements that these, uh, these uh, wise men would bring to this Christ child. Amen, let's move on. Again, this is a map I share with you. That when it was time to leave, these Magi, to return to their own, their, their, their own country by another route. Because remember that, 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 that King Herod had told them that he wanted them, once they found this king, that they wanted, they wanted him to 
and wanted them to come back to him and, and tell him where he was so he can go and worship. He says, when you find him, come back and tell me so I can go and worship him too. Remember, these wise men were also priests. And they were aware of the word of God. Because it says here in the text that when it was time for them to leave, the Magi returned to their own country by another route for God had warned them in a dream not to return to this Herod. Herod operating under the principalities in power. Herod operating under the power of Satan because Satan's job was that he wanted to stop this one who had gone to bruise his head. The one prophesied Messiah. The one that would take down the principalities and powers. Next slide. This is our last printed text. Let's move on to close. Amen. Let me share with you that this is a thread that begins woven from Genesis now into this moment where Satan wanted this child to die. And this king wanted this child to die as well because he could not have this child, this child taken his position these things need to be done to accomplish their own mission. Both had the same mission in mind to stop the Christ child. Amen. These three kings were priests and astrologers as well. And, and again, that they had the, this was the faith of these wise men, that they knew that this was Emmanuel, this was God with us. And the Magi fell down and worshiped this Jesus. One more slide to close out this lesson. Amen. The faith of the wise men. And that's these Magi, right? That's this a beautiful message of, a, of how God would, would send this child into the world to be born, to become the redeemer of humanity become the Prince of Peace to restore the relationship with God and man. And Jesus is the reason for our season we are in this moment. And you have to, uh, would you have protected this young king if you were in the position of these wise men? That they could have done exactly what the king said and they could have been obedient to the king and, and did, but they did this civil disobedience and they no doubt they were they knew what god they were again i share with you that they were priests as well and then and, and they knew that what god had spoken to them and sent them back a different way and, and have you sought after this messiah this just king would that been your thing and you were, were 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 seeking and looking and you see the stars and would you take all of this effort to travel so far in order to see this king this king are you a wise man and woman again that's the faith these men had great faith and have you worshiped almighty god lately again this is the end of the year kind of a concept for you that again that i don't know your condition but i think that that that, that this is what the christmas is about this was the the jesus is the reason for the season i share with you you have have you worshiped Almighty God lately? Lately, have you given Jesus any gifts? Have you given him the gifts of your your talents, your your abilities, and your time, and your and your your effort, and and your and your finances as well? Is the Messiah your Messiah? And have you shared this real Christmas story with anyone? That's the essence of this message. The faith of the wise men is our subject, and I just hope that you're wise. If you're wise, you take time. You take time of your in your life to find this Jesus. Because that's what these men did. They traveled a long way. They spent a lot of effort to find their way to Jesus. And I share with you a million times that our life, and in this life, on this planet, it's only for one thing to find our way to this Jesus. So that when we go before our holy and righteous Father at the end of the days, that he, he will ask us, do we know Jesus? But even the greater question is, he will ask, does Jesus know you? And these wise men can say that they traveled very, very far distance to find 
Jesus and Jesus knows them and they know Jesus and that is our Sunday school lesson this week and my prayer that something you've learned this week strengthen your faith the Lord provides all your needs you learn something worthy of sharing I hope you're wise as a result of this lesson in Jesus name I do pray and ask these things always amen thanks so much for your time